In the last example, we found a basis for each eigenspace separately. Um, in future sections, what we will need is one set of eigenvectors that give you a basis for the entire Rn, and so we'd like to put them together. Right, so we'll start with a baby version of this. So let A be a square matrix and assume that lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k are different eigenvalues for A. And I'm going to assume that VI is an eigenvector for lambda i. Then if I place them, all these VIs together in a set, that set will be linearly independent. All right, so if you take eigenvectors of different eigenvalues and place them together, you're going to get something that's linearly independent. All right, so I'm going to prove this. It's really proved by induction, but even if you don't know induction, you should be able to follow part of it. So let's see and get something out of it. Um, base case, I'm going to look at a set of one vector. So it's one eigenvector, but the eigenvector is not zero. Because eigenvectors are not zero, and so that means that set is nearly independent. All right, ready for the induction step. I'm going to assume that the result is true for v1 to vk minus 1. I'm going to assume that that set is nearly independent. And I'm going to show that adding the extra VK will not change that. It's also going to be linearly independent. All right, so if you really wanted to do a full proof, um, the way to do it is you start with V1 independent. You use this to add V2. Then V1, V2 is independent. You use this again to add V3. You use this to add V4 and so on. And so if this step is true, you'd be able to say that any size of set built this way would be linearly independent. All right, so assume that I have a dependence relation for S. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply A to this. So if I multiply this by A, I'm going to get A times 0. I'm going to still get 0. So this side is pretty simple. It's going to give me 0. That side is way more interesting. What I'll get I'm going to get a times different eigenvalues of uh, vectors and so I'm going to get their eigenvalues coming in. So here the first one will be lambda 1 uh, a1 lambda 1 v1, then I'm going to get a2 lambda 2 v2, and ak lambda k vk, and that's 0. All right, so I had one linear dependence relation, and I got a second one. These two are sort of different, right, because I'm multiplying uh, each term by a different number. And so I can play them off each other. I want to play them off to cancel the VKs. And so I'm going to take, let's call this the first dependence relation, the second one. I'm going to take the second one minus lambda K times the first one. Then I'm going to get A1 lambda 1 V1 plus A2 lambda 2 v2 plus a k minus 1 lambda k minus 1 v k minus 1 and then I have a k lambda k v k and then I'm going to subtract um, a 1 lambda k v 1 a 2 lambda k v 2 a k minus 1 lambda k minus 1 Ah, sorry, lambda k v k and a k lambda k v k. 
All right, so these two will actually cancel completely. All the other ones, since the lambdas don't match, I'm going to get, so this is going to be equal to the zero vector, and so I'm going to get that a1, lambda1, lambda k, v1, plus a2, lambda2, lambda k, sorry, minus v2 plus a k minus 1, uh, lambda k minus 1, lambda k, v k is 0, uh, v k minus 1. But now this is a dependence relation on the smaller set, on v1 through v k minus 1, which we are assuming is independent. And so if, if we have a dependence relation, all the coefficients, must be zero. I have a1 lambda 1 minus lambda k is zero and so on up to a k minus 1 lambda 1 minus lambda k is zero. But these are different and so that part isn't zero and so I'm getting that a1 equals zero and a k minus 1 equals 0. And so if I go back to this dependence relation, and so in 1 I get a k v k equals 0, and so a k is 0 as well. And so yes, s is linearly independent. This result is not true if you allow the same eigenvalue multiple times, of course, because if you look at what we have here, we have infinitely many eigenvectors for that eigenvalue, but the subspace is only dimension one, so as soon as you add a second one, it's not dependent. All right, so this result, which is kind of nice, but is a bit restrictive because we assume that we are using only one eigenvector for each eigenvalue, um, can be generalized. So here's a generalization. Let A be a square matrix, let lambda 1 through lambda k be the eigenvalues of A, and assume that I have a basis for the eigenspace E lambda i A of A corresponding to lambda i. Then S, which is B1, B2, Bk, is nearly independent. Right, so you can put the bases that you have for each eigenspace together and you still get a linearly independent set. It might not be a basis for all of Rn, in some cases it will, in some cases it won't, but it will still be independent. Uh, let me say, the proof of this is quite close to what we just did. It's just slightly more complicated, which is why I'd rather uh, do the simpler version, especially because some of you haven't seen induction yet. Let me just say, at this step, um, instead of just getting rid of vk, you would get rid of every element of the last basis. And so here you'd have a dependence relation on that basis, and you would use the fact that it's independent to say that all the coefficients are zero. Right, so the induction would be on k again.